What's happening in Mexico's skies? Why is it that in the last 15 years, unidentified flying objects have flown through these skies with a frequency that seems to be steadily increasing? The number of witnesses is multiplying too, and thanks to technology, so is the number of amateur films. The media have documented these incredible episodes, and many people are now wondering what's happening in Mexico. The most organized of them are a group of researchers who have begun an unprecedented project in the history of modern ufology, systematically studying and monitoring the sky. Everything is filmed, recorded, and scientifically documented. The team's name is the Vigilantes, and their work has produced an incredible number of photographs, testimonies, and films, which are analyzed very carefully. The amount of material was so impressive that it led the researchers to think of Mexico as a true contact point. It all began with the total solar eclipse that took place in Mexico on the 11th of July, 1991 coinciding with an ancient Mayan prophecy. The prophecy foretold that such an eclipse in Mexico would mark the beginning of humanity's encounter with the Lords of the Stars. It was all written in the Dresden Codex, one of the few documents that escaped the wrath of the Spanish conquistadors. But let's get back to the eclipse. On the 11th of July, 1991, Millions of people and hundreds of video cameras followed this spectacular astronomical event. Initially, nobody seemed to notice the presence of an anomalous aircraft hovering in the sky over Mexico City. But when reviewing the footage later, many people noted the intruder. It seemed to be made of metal that reflected the sunlight, and it was shaped like a classic flying saucer. The sighting created quite a stir, and even the TV media became involved, especially researcher and journalist Jaime Massan. In the days following the eclipse, the staff of Televisa, one of Mexico's largest private TV networks, was flooded with videos of the mysterious aircraft. The public's curiosity grew. What exactly was the object filmed during the eclipse? Where did it come from? Could it possibly be a confirmation of the mysterious Mayan prophecy? Demetrio Feria, one of the first members of the Vigilantes, remembers that day well. My experience began in June of 1991. Before the great eclipse that took place in Mexico on the 11th of July of that year. That was when I decided to film them. I already had a video camera and I wanted to know whether the phenomenon was real or just a bunch of lies, special effects or something like that. And luckily, I managed to capture them on film. I devoted quite a bit of time to them between June and November, and I began filming them one dawn in November at five in the morning. Ruben Villatoro also remembers the eclipse well. That was the moment he decided to become a vigilante. After the total solar eclipse on the 11th of July 1991, Jaime Moussan went on television and said that at the time of the eclipse, there were people who had filmed the UFOs with their video cameras. I decided that it was important to follow their example. I bought a video camera, and over the years, I've filmed several objects flying over Mexico City. The event during the eclipse seemed to have opened a Pandora's box of UFO sightings. Thus, Mexico saw the beginning of one of the most intense waves of sightings in history. Without a doubt, the remarkable availability of cameras and video cameras improved the potential for sightings. But the number of sightings only began to grow exponentially after the eclipse of the 11th of July, 1991.
footage from Mexico traveled around the world, amazing those who saw the videos and bringing much joy to scholars who had never had so much material to analyze. Of all the investigators, Jaime Marsan is the most responsible for having researched and disseminated the large quantity of video footage captured in Mexico by both occasional witnesses and by the vigilantes. The idea to start this group was also his. The vigilantes group was Jaime's idea. He was the one to form the group, and when I arrived, it was already in existence. The group still exists. Its members are few, but those who have stayed are at the forefront of this research. Today, Jaime Marsan directs and coordinates the vigilante's work alongside researcher Pedro Avila. His videos of unidentified flying objects have circulated all around the world, generating a great deal of interest. For over 15 years, Pedro has lived the life of a near recluse in his small room due to a debilitating illness that has practically immobilized him. Despite this, Pedro Avila has made some very important contributions to international ufological research from within his small world. A small window and a piece of sky are his only contact with the outside world, which he observes carefully from the first hours of the day well into the night. He's a full-time vigilante, and without a shadow of a doubt, He's one of the best. A lot of people ask me or wonder why most of my videos were filmed from this little window. Well, there are two reasons. First of all, I have a little window no more than 1.8 meters in length and 1 meter in height, and my visual angle is quite limited. Therefore, it's a bit difficult for me to make out these objects. And in this little space, I've managed to record everything that I've filmed to the present. The second reason is that some time ago, I was diagnosed with an illness known as progressive muscular dystrophy, which obviously gets worse with time. And now I can't leave the house like I used to. In the past, I used to film these videos from the garden or the garage. But when my health grew delicate, I was forced to stay in my room. I imagined, I thought that this would limit my ability to film videos, since I didn't have the same extent of sky that I could see from the garden. However, I was greatly surprised because I realized that from here, from this little window, I've recorded the best videos I've ever shot. Pedro is a true example of extraordinary passion and willpower. Armed with his camera, video camera and binoculars, he has captured some of the best footage of unidentified flying objects ever filmed. collection includes some light spheres and the famous flotillas. One of the most important videos of spheres was recorded in Mexico in 2002. The images clearly show two spheres revolving in the sky. Ordinarily, the spheres appear to be shiny and white, but in this film, the sphere's metal form is clearer than ever before. This footage confirms statements made by many other witnesses who claim to have seen similar spheres fly through the sky and suddenly change state, going from luminous to metallic. In addition to flotillas and spheres, Pedro has also filmed some unconventional flying objects of a totally unexplained appearance. I once filmed six dark objects that look like watermelon seeds, like little black seeds. 
These six objects formed a shape in the sky very much like a flower with six petals. Lo curioso es que cuando uno hace el acercamiento con la cámara, the strange thing is that when we zoom in, when we analyze the video, when we add filters and all the rest, we can't seem to find a structure. In other words, the objects are moving rhythmically, with an amazing synchronicity, and always keeping the same position as if they were a flower, spinning, going up and down, but always keeping the same distance, despite there being no structure between the objects. Avia's video is the first to show an object of such a shape flying in broad daylight. Pedro Avia has filmed objects demonstrating incredible abilities that have never before been documented. Thanks to his commitment and an original filming technique, he has produced results showing that the mysterious unidentified flying objects may have features we don't yet know about, which are of extraordinary interest. One of the videos I consider the most important involves objects that are invisible to the naked eye and which can only be captured by using infrared vision. To do this, I developed a special technique using two video cameras. One films in the usual spectrum, and the other films in the infrared spectrum. To use them both, I made a special rigging and placed one camera atop the other, training them on the same point. That is, the same focal distance, the same level of zoom. I frame the images so that they show the exact same thing. Therefore, what the normal camera sees is also what the infrared camera sees. This is very important, because it demonstrates that there are objects moving in the sky that are invisible to the human eye, and we can't perceive their presence. The large number of videos that the vigilantes have recorded shows that craft are flying through our skies with characteristics and flight dynamics that differ from the conventional features of aeroplanes or helicopters. And that's not all. These videos demonstrate that systematic and continuous observation of the sky can provide interesting documentation. Quite different from accidental amateur footage which tends to raise doubts. It's no coincidence that the vigilantes have respectable professional backgrounds. One of the things that drove me to become a vigilante of the sky was my work as a professional architecture photographer. In particular, what was important was that it led me to take good pictures, and as a professional photographer, my knowledge of light and shadow makes a difference. It's a very important factor to be able to see the objects, knowing what time of day the light helps us, when the sun literally brings out the objects. Spheres and flotillas also make frequent appearances in the videos by Arturo Robles Guile, and they are truly spectacular. Where could these mysterious objects have come from? Some people believe they have captured the answer in a photograph. During the great wave of sightings in the 1990s, phenomena were sighted that amazed both direct witnesses and researchers. Video cameras captured flying objects capable of releasing an incredible number of spheres, giving rise to the flotilla phenomenon. At first, the classic luminous spherical objects were the ones to show this trait. Later, but still in Mexico, enormous tubular structures were sighted and filmed. Further light spheres came out of these irregularly shaped structures. This new chapter added new questions and mysterious elements to the world of ufology. Even the ufology experts can't explain these images. The objects are christened gusanas voladores, or flying worms, because of their appearance. They raise many questions. 
where do they come from? What technology do they use? How can these structures appear and hover in the sky without any known flight mechanism? How can they contain and expel the number of spheres that have been filmed? A major step has been taken thanks once again to one of the vigilantes, engineer Arturo Robles Gila. Esa mañana yo subí a la azotea a pesar de que estaba muy nublado, subí a, a ver las condiciones climatológicas cómo iban a estar para en la noche. That morning I went out onto the terrace, although it was very cloudy, to check the weather conditions because that night there was going to be a lunar eclipse, which is very important from a photographic point of view. En ese año 2004 at the time, in 2004, there were a number of people here repairing the building, and we all witnessed it. But I was the only one who looked up to the zenith. I don't even know why I did it, as I usually made general observations all around. But on that day, I remember that I turned my head completely upward, and I saw an object I couldn't identify. I saw a structure. At first sight, it looked like a mass, white and enormous. To give you an idea of how large it was, it was like two jets put together. It was huge. At the time, I was already interested in phenomena discovered in the sky. I had my video camera and tripod in hand, and I began to film the object. Al hacer acercamientos con la cámara de video, me di cuenta que la estructura se movía, que no era una cosa que flotaba. Moving closer with my video camera, I realized that the structure was moving, that it wasn't simply floating. It was twisting, writhing. It contracted and expanded. And when I saw that it was beginning to expel spheres, it was clear to me that something absolutely incredible was happening. Entonces dije, bueno, ¿qué puedo, qué más puedo hacer? What else can I do? I thought that photographs could be a tremendously important support, and so I took some. I remember that I took about 24 photographs. The high-definition images that Gila obtained mark an important breakthrough in the study of these spectacular unidentified structures. When I downloaded the photos to my computer, I realized that the structure appeared to be formed by thousands or hundreds of thousands of segments. It also had colored outer spheres. I'll be honest, at first I thought it might be a spectacular bunch of balloons. I talked about it with Jaime Mausan. I went to his office, and as soon as he saw what I had filmed, without having the slightest idea of what it was, he said, Arturo, what you've captured here is absolutely spectacular. There were those who were skeptical, whose unfounded argument was that they could be balloons. So, Jaime Mausan immediately phoned a very well-known performer here in Mexico City, who uses the largest balloons in production. When he arrived at the office and saw the images, he said, these aren't balloons, and even if they were balloons, a structure like this would require at least 57,000 balloons, possibly more. How could you possibly create a structure with 57,000 balloons without any gas escapes? And how could you let it fly upwards? Furthermore, you'd need a special permit, because a structure of that size needs a permit to fly, especially because in that particular area, it was very close to flight paths used by airplanes to turn into the airport. Para mí, 
Ese fue el parteaguas. Ese Eva ni madre. Así to me, that was a breakthrough. The mother Ibani, as I call it. The mothership. The acronym Ibani stands in Spanish for Unidentified Aerial Biological Entity. And since Gila photographed them in high definition, sightings of Ibanis have been increasingly frequent. Los movimientos de estos objetos son realmente muy orgánicos. O sea, the movements of these objects seems to be organic. ¿Cómo se mueve una serpiente o cómo se mueve uno? They remind us of a living being. Bueno, es exactamente la misma manera en que se mueven. ¿Por qué se mueven así? No lo sé. Quizá es su manera de navegar o de estar o de mantener. Maybe this is how they maintain stability in the sky. Realmente no sé por qué se mueven de la misma manera que ocurre en la Tierra con estos organismos. Por lo tanto, los hemos considerado entidades biológicas. We've called them unidentified aerial biological entities, or EBANI. And this biological aspect is the most important thing. They appear to be alive. I don't know if they are or not, but that's the sense you get when you see them on film. We do know that when we see an Ibani, we'll see spheres afterwards, which may show that there's some connection. These features become even more evident in the videos made by Arturo Robles Gila since then. The forms and behavior of these anomalous entities seem to be writing the most incredible chapter in the study of unidentified flying objects. Un ebani es una es una entidad de tipo tubular. An ebani is a tubular type entity that is also elastic. It's capable of twisting and writhing movements. It can move vertically and horizontally. It doesn't need engines to fly. It doesn't make any noise. And it doesn't leave a wake. The Ibanis appear to have a specific activity, expelling countless spheres into the atmosphere. On some occasions, they have moved from the place where they ordinarily appear and come towards this area. It's, sorry, it's as if they wanted to be seen, to be observed with greater precision. Thanks to my work as a photographer, this has enabled me to create videos that I believe are without precedent, even on an international level. The videos made by the vigilantes are just a small part of the large amount of footage showing the continuous activity of unidentified flying objects in the skies of our planet. The two most common questions are always the same, no matter where the phenomena are sighted. What are those objects in the sky? And should we be afraid of them? Giorgio Bongiovanni is one of the Italian scholars following the wave of sightings in Mexico very closely. The claims of ordinary citizens, military personnel, astronauts and scientists, and the analyses performed on a remarkable amount of photographic and video materials, including the testimony of contactees, whose experience has been proven to be real after several years. Ci dicono che probabilmente siamo visitati da esseri provenienti dal cosmo. They all show that it's likely we are being visited by beings from space. They are passive, unaggressive visits, more concentrated in Latin America and in Mexico than in other parts of the world. But they occur all over the planet. This is happening in a period in which humanity is going through a difficult moment in its evolution. I believe that if clear, direct contact were to occur with these civilizations, it would lead to a truly profound Copernican revolution for us. I think that humanity could solve the serious problems in terms of social, political, economic and environmental justice, which are causing us to risk self-destruction, 
It would definitely be a new impulse for science and religion. It would bring about the end of the dogmatisms and dangerous fanaticism at the basis of many of today's wars. I can only hope that this event will occur as soon as possible. In fact, over many years of sightings, the UFO phenomenon has never been accompanied by any signs of aggression. One thing is certain, Mexico seems to play a central role in this saga that borders on science fiction. And the reason why is still a mystery. Perhaps the only clue is an ancient Mayan prophecy that tells of an encounter with the men of the stars. An encounter that would have begun in 1991 and may end in the year 2012. The appearance of unidentified aerial biological entities, or Ibani, is one of the most surprising breakthroughs in the history of unidentified flying objects. The term Ibani stands for Unidentified Aerial Biological Entity in Spanish, and it was coined by Mexican researcher and journalist Jaime Marsan. One of these entities was captured in a video and photos by Arturo Robles Gila on the morning of the 27th of October 2004. In Gila's opinion, this particular entity constitutes a true breakthrough in UFO apparitions and a new enigmatic puzzle for scholars. Until that fateful morning, very little was known about these structures, in part due to the rarity of available videos and the fact that the images didn't have enough definition to be interpreted properly. The video, and in particular the extraordinary photos that Arturo Robles Gile managed to take on the 27th of October 2004, clearly show that the Ibani is a structure formed by thousands of clustered spheres. A sort of aircraft carrier, the function of which seems to be to transport and expel these spheres into our atmosphere. The reason why this should happen is completely unknown. It's a phenomenon that's difficult to catalogue and explain, even for mainstream science. Hasta hoy, los científicos no Scientists have only been able to provide one answer so far. Estamos confrontando we're looking at an anomalous phenomenon that is classified in neither micro nor macro biology. From an observation of the photos taken by Gila, we can clearly see the structure is formed of translucent spheres in three different colors, red, white and blue. Until that moment, only one video had shown a transparent sphere in flight. It too had been recorded in Mexico by Javier Guevara in 2002. At the time, however, the origin of this new kind of sphere was unknown. The sphere's trajectory is linear and its speed is fairly sustained indicating that it has its own propulsion system. But the nature of the system that enables such an object to fly remains a mystery. Its transparency and the lack of any visible technological apparatus cannot be compared to any known or imaginable technology. After the video of the 27th of October 2004, Gila identified and recorded the flight of other similar spheres on film and in photographs. This transparent sphere was photographed at low altitude in 2005. Gila recorded this video while he attended a Mayan ceremony in the area called Cerro de la Estrella, or Star Mountain. This site, in the federal district of the City of Mexico, is believed to be magic and sacred, and many UFOs have been sighted here. 
Y bueno, pues al llegar inmediatamente, mi cuñada ubicó en una posición cenital a un objeto As soon as we arrived, my sister-in-law noticed a large, translucent object, and I began to film it. We were all quite surprised that it could happen in that place. But Gila came upon his most spectacular scoop on the 28th of January 2005. His video shows an entire flotilla composed of these iridescent spheres. The spheres dance elegantly in the sky, quite unlike anything that had been filmed up to that time. In the pictures, we can clearly see the various colors of the shining spheres. The colors are even clearer than in the video. The images clearly show the same kind of spheres that made up the Ibani photographed on the 27th of October 2004. Thus, according to Gila, this video may confirm that the mysterious aerial biological entities would continue to deposit spheres into the skies over Mexico City. But the phenomenon has further surprises in store for us. Después de ese encuentro visual con esta enorme After the enormous entity was sighted in 2004, others began to appear, but they weren't the same. They didn't look like the first one, although they showed the same type of behavior during the flight. Once I had sighted these entities, I began to realize that they weren't just white, and there wasn't just one type of Ibani, but other types of different colors, with different designs on their surface, and with a different way of moving. The photos taken by Arturo Robles Gila on the 14th of May 2006 are a clear example of the variety of Ibanis. These Ibani are brightly colored and have a helical, tubular structure which is completely different from the cluster of spheres spotted in October 2004. So, why helical? Because a helical structure, with the same diameter, obviously, has a larger storage capacity for the spheres inside it. It can contain hundreds of spheres, which they then expel into our atmosphere. When looking at this new photographic material, many skeptics think that these are only colorful balloons. Con respecto a los ebanis de colores, yo entiendo el escepticismo de las gentes. I can understand the skepticism about the colored ebani, the people who think that they are structures made of balloons. Pero afortunadamente, yo no solamente me remito a usar la cámara de video. Luckily, I am never satisfied with just using video cameras to film them. Si lo vemos en 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 términos técnicos. Seen in technical terms, video cameras have a resolution of 640 by 780 pixels. And at best, we'll get a resolution of 520 lines. That's why I also take photographs. Photos go deeper because they allow us to see more detail. And photos have demonstrated, in an unequivocal way, that these are not structures made of balloons. Skeptics have tried to discredit this phenomenon, but their claim that these are garlands of balloons is completely unfounded. They don't have a single high-resolution photograph. They don't have photos taken with high-sensitivity apochromatic lenses. Their claims are based solely on the color of these structures. 
But Robles Gila isn't the only one to have filmed the Abani. The phenomenon began to spread, and these entities were sighted and filmed by others too, both in Mexico and in other parts of the world. This black Ebani, filmed in the skies over Los Angeles, is of remarkable interest. On one of its ends, we can clearly see a blinking light. The mystery surrounding their true nature thus gains a new element, which had been unknown up to this time. Once again, Gila amazes us with his material. On the 18th of March 2007, he recorded a new video and experienced an unprecedented event. In his video, we get a real impression that the Ebani is a live creature. In that date, on the 18th of March, one of these Ebani se dejó venir para acá. On the 18th of March, an Abani was moving towards us, flying low. I filmed the object passing over my head. I was able to film it with truly amazing detail. This terrace has two levels, and we're on the lower part. I climbed to the top part because it was going towards the Ajusco area, southwards, and by then I was satisfied with the close-up images I'd got. So I went up without my video camera and I realize now that it was a mistake not to have brought it with me. Once the Ibani arrived, making its usual twisting movements, it suddenly stopped, straightened itself, and flew off at an astonishing speed towards the Santa Fe area, arriving there in just a few seconds. From that moment, it was clear to me that this wasn't just some kind of flying snake, but a real aircraft, capable of traveling and moving at incredible speeds, much faster than any commercial or military aircraft. Arturo Robles Gilles' story seems to confirm that the Ibanis cannot be a mass formed of mere balloons. The images show an autonomous flight mechanism, an unexplainable propulsion system as unexplainable as the system that expels its spheres into the atmosphere. In the video of the 1st of July 2007 too, we get a remarkable sense of the biological nature of the Ibanis. The entity moves in a continuous fashion, and the video clearly shows its helical structure. The biological entities also seem to appear in groups. In 2005, Jesus Lomelli had already filmed three entities together. Later, Gila also recorded videos and took photos showing multiple biological entities. But the most striking material, showing an entire flotilla of Ibanis, was recorded by Miguel Angel Chavez in Mexico City. In the videos recorded on the 22nd and 23rd of September 2007, we can clearly see Ibanis of various colors hovering in the sky and moving in their characteristic way. This 
Mina está echando esferas. The aerial biological entities seem to be connected to the presence of spheres in the skies over our planet. And their activity also seems to have increased over the course of recent years. Alone, in pairs, or in flotillas of varying number, they're being increasingly captured on film. However, they've only been seen in their metallic form a few times, as in this video recorded by Arturo Robles Guile. At the same time, videos of flotillas formed of metal spheres are rarer than those formed of light spheres. In Flavio Alcantara's video, we see a dark Ibani, and nearby a similarly dark flying sphere. The connection between Ibani and spheres has rarely been revealed so clearly as in the sighting by Arturo Robles Gila of the 27th of October 2004. But there are other images in which the two phenomena appear together. In the first video, we see the Ibani looking like it's closed in on itself, moving independently of the spheres surrounding it. In this case too, this autonomous movement confirms that these are not balls or balloons. In the second film, we can clearly see the Ibani twist and change form while a remarkable number of white spheres move around it. We can make out spheres which are less visible, which give a better perception of the flotilla's depth in the sky. This elegant and majestic entity has now been flying over our cities with increasing frequency. Just a few meters seem to separate humanity from an extraordinary and unexplainable phenomenon. El fenómeno del, de los objetos voladores mal llamado ovnis. The phenomenon of the flying objects, incorrectly termed UFOs, exists. It's real. I can confirm this based on the amount of evidence we have and the proof I've seen. Not just my evidence, but also the evidence produced by my colleagues and others outside Mexico. We receive material from all over Mexico, and luckily I get direct access to it. I'm the one who examines and selects the material. The UFO phenomenon in both Mexico and throughout the world is real. It exists. Demetrio Feria's statements are supported by the incredible number of videos he has recorded up to the present, and by the incredible technological abilities that the flying objects seem to possess. Hasta ahorita, mis 
So far, I've been able to record about 400 videos in the 16 years I've been studying this phenomenon. El video que yo tengo, el que me ha impresionado más, es de una esfera. Of the videos I've made, the one that stood out the most is the one of a sphere that I filmed from my house with an infrared lens. It's a little sphere which couldn't be seen with the naked eye, but it was in the sky. These objects are in the air. They live with us. Esa esfera baja y de cero velocidad. The sphere comes down and slows down until it almost stops. Then it flies off at an incredible speed. On several occasions, I've been able to film objects flying at a phenomenal speed. I have many such videos. Their speed amazes me. On the 5th of November 2006, Dimitrio Feria used an infrared lens applied to his video camera to film once again a sphere darting around at very high speed. Can the remarkable movements of the sphere filmed by the vigilante be called accidental? Its speed, the angle at which it flies, its ability to make itself invisible and then visible, which is only discernible through the use of infrared lenses, puts these craft beyond our current technical and scientific knowledge. The extraordinary claims thus far presented seem to suggest that the UFO phenomenon could truly be the product of intelligent beings seeking contact. Some people think of the words of an ancient Mayan prophecy that pointed to our time as the period in which humanity was to encounter the Lord from the stars. And according to some, the video of seven light spheres forming a perfect cross recorded by Steve Burns on the 14th of August 2005 in the skies above Florida, may be a message to be deciphered. The video of the cross was recorded in St. Petersburg, Florida, on Sunday the 14th of August. We know that Mr. Steve Burns filmed it. We have analyzed the video and verified that it isn't computer generated, and thus it's a truly exceptional document. The video was made 15 days before the arrival of Hurricane Katrina, Anuncia ya el inicio de un proceso final que quizá culminará en los... It appears to announce the beginning of a final process that could come to an end in the next few years. Los grandes peligros que estamos confrontando estamos observando... We're seeing great changes on Earth, such as changes in climate. We're facing seriously dangerous situations. Global warming and continually increasing solar activity are factors that could cause huge changes in the next few years. I think it's a kind of warning, an indication of what might come to pass. That's why I see this as a very important sign, a very important video.
There are those who are anxiously waiting for the year 2012, the moment of change that the Maya had predicted centuries ago. It could represent the beginning of a new era of peace for humanity. I'd say that the signs are there, and this massive contact between man and extraterrestrials will be the sign of a new era. To be precise, and I also want to say that, in my opinion, this presence is peaceful. There's no invasion. There will be no wars between men and extraterrestrials. Because these civilizations are obviously much more advanced than us, both scientifically and technologically. But this goes hand in hand with ethical and spiritual progress. Therefore, any contact will be peaceful. Could the extraordinary flying objects shown in these videos be a sign of this coming visit? Will there really be direct contact in the future? These questions are still unanswered. But each day, it seems we come closer to understanding the enigma of UFOs, one of the most fascinating mysteries of our time. <laughs>